Hi, I'm Paul. Thanks for checking out this Power Apps video. Uh, I say a Power Apps video, it's more of a Power Platform video because I'm going to talk about Dataverse, although I'm going to be talking about Dataverse from the perspective of a Canvas Power App developer. Okay, I don't work with Power Apps portals, I don't work with model driven Power Apps, so I can't really comment on it from the perspective of uh, developers of those systems uh, and I'm no specialist in Dynamics so I can't talk about it from that angle either. So I'm talking about this from the angle of a Canvas Power Apps developer but I suspect that some of what I'm going to say applies to those other systems as well. Now in previous videos I have sometimes been somewhat disparaging towards Dataverse or CDS or whatever it was known as at the time because it's gone through many name changes. Uh, and a few people have asked me why, and so I'm going to attempt to respond to that in this video. So this video is about why I hate Dataverse. I really don't like Dataverse. Um, so the reason I don't like Dataverse, I'm sure it has many positive aspects, but it has some cons, it has some negative aspects. And to me, the key negative aspects are the lack of support for proper data modeling and normalization. Data modeling and normalization are absolutely key to transactional databases. There are other kinds of databases where it's not quite so important. So, yes, you can't just make the blanket term of, of normalization is what you should do for all databases. It's what you should do for all transactional databases. OK, uh, reporting databases and so on are a slightly different beast. Uh, but for transactional databases, databases which are going to capture the input directly, you want those to be normalized. And there's a key reason for that, and that is that normalization prevents duplication, duplication of data. So let's say that in a particular data model, we're storing people's date of birth, and we can store that in two different places. OK, what happens? when one date of birth does not agree with the other for a particular person. Well, then you've got a problem. So it's much better to only have the date of birth in one place. If you have the same bit of information repeated in multiple places in your database, sooner or later, that information is going to get out of sync. OK, you're going to get information in one that is different from the other or the others, and then you don't know what to trust. So that's why normalization is important. Some people will say, oh, you don't need to normalize anymore. Normalization is, is just about uh, saving on storage space. And storage is so cheap, why normalize? That's not what normalization is about. Normalization is about making sure that your data is accurate. OK, if you don't have normalization, if you have duplicated information, you have multiple places in which to search for data and you may get multiple conflicting answers back again. So normalization, absolutely key. If you don't know much about normalization, it's not a terribly difficult concept. Uh, it's well worth watching some videos on that or reading some articles on that. I'm not going to go into it here. OK, so why does Dataverse not properly support normalization? Well, I suppose you could argue that, you know, it kind of does, but then anything could support normalization. Excel spreadsheets could support normalization, text files could support normalization. You could still build a normalized data model in whatever. The problem comes when you're trying to retrieve that information again, because when you've got a properly normalized database, you end up splitting the information off into lots and lots of different tables, and then you have joins or relationships between those tables so that you can pull that information back out and you can get the accurate picture again. And that's what Dataverse doesn't support. It doesn't have a query language like SQL that allows you to traverse multiple levels of join. So join table A to join ta to table B, sorry, to table C to table D to pull all that information back out again. You can only go one join deep. You can only go from table A to table B. OK, if something is then linked to table B, you can't connect to it. OK, not in Dataverse. There is, I believe, a kind of hodgepodge thing stuck on the side of Dataverse to try to address this, which is called Fetch XML. Um, it's not available to you from within a Canvas Power App. 
So that's not an answer. That's not a solution. And from what I can gather from people who are writing uh, workflows and things that work inside Dataverse, they tend not to use Fetch XML for whatever reason either. OK, so let's have a little look at some of the standard uh, tables in Dataverse. So when you create Dataverse, you can say, give me um, some standard tables. So these are part of what's called the, the common data model. So this is supposed to be, um, you know, this, this industry standard um, data model that you can then just adopt for your own company rather than having to recreate the wheel all the time. So you would expect this to be kind of a, a showcase for how great Dataverses and how well designed Dataverse tables are. But let's just take a little look at the first table that we've got in here, the account table. Now let's have a look at just how many fields we've got in there. I'm not going to make you count them. There's more than 150 fields in this one table. OK, and look at what we've got here straight away. We can see that things are not properly normalized. We've got all these addresses. We've got address one and we've got address two. OK, well, they should be in their own table. They shouldn't be in here straight away. We've got a problem because if we want to look for an address, we, even if it's just for an account, we've immediately got two places that we can look for it. We've got address one and we've got address two. And we can't even say, oh, everything in address one is a delivery address and everything in address two is the invoicing address. So, yeah, if you want the delivery address, then just look in address one. No, because we've got address type in here as well. So you can mix and match all these things. So now if I'm looking for the delivery address for an account, I've got to look in at least two different places. OK, I've got to check these addresses again. Or if I am entering a new uh, delivery address. I might have a look and say, oh, OK, we don't have a delivery address in address one. So let's add a delivery address there. And then it turns out that we've already got a delivery address in address two. And now we don't know which address is correct. So it's just a mess. And that's the addresses. Have a look at what we've got for phone numbers. OK, so there are a couple of these where uh, they're not actual phone numbers. So this one and this one is not actually a phone number, but everything else in here is a phone number. OK, so it's a complete mess. Um, horrible. Uh, there we go. Uh, and then in addition to the account table, we've got another address table. OK, so you might then start linking your accounts to these addresses. OK, that may not be built into the model of standard, but that seems to be uh, kind of what the what the idea possibly is. So that if you need even more addresses, well, then you can stick them in this address table. So it's all a bit of a mess. Now, uh, what I've done here to try and also show you how these joins are difficult to work with is I've added a couple of tables of my own invoice header and invoice detail. Um, invoice header has uh, a link to the account, a relationship with account, and then has things like the invoice number and the invoice date. And then invoice detail uh, has a link to invoice header and is the product uh, or service that we're supplying and the quantity and the price. So just very simple. So if I want to create a view now, which is going to let me say, for example, I want to know all the times I have sold product X to an account with an address in a particular city. I'm not going to be able to do it. And let me show you how that works in Dataverse. So I'm going to start with uh, invoice detail and I'm going to say I want to create a view based on invoice detail. So the views are always based on the tables. They're not an independent thing like they are in SQL, where a view can have any table in it at all. So here we sort of do it the reverse way. We say, OK, we've got to create a view. So I'm going to create a new view. I'll call this uh, 
product x sold in city y and I'm going to hit the create button on there. OK, and we'll see that I can add things like the, the product or service. So I'm going to add the product or service and then I would be able to put a filter on there. So great, so I've got the product. Uh, so now uh, I want to go to the related uh, thing, which is the invoice header. So I will go to the invoice header and say, well, I want to add the account from the invoice header. So this is all looking good so far. And now what I want to do is I want to add the city from the account in the invoice header and then add a filter on that. And what you'll see is, oh, well, I can't do that. OK, uh, there's no there's no facility for me to drill down further into account and to start pulling things out of the actual account. So I've got account equals, but I can't choose a column underneath account. So you can't do proper um, querying. Uh, and because you can't do proper querying, you then have to start making compromises to your data model, which I believe is what you're seeing in those standard tables. So if I wanted to be able to do this query, the only option that I have got, as I understand it, is to say, OK, what I need to do is down at this invoice detail level would be to repeat the account information again. So that's sometimes referred to as a redundant relationship. So I would, in my invoice detail, reference not only the invoice header, but also the account. So if I'm directly relating to it, if I'm just one join away, I would then be able to do what I want to do. I would then be able to do that filter on the city. But now I'm repeating that information about the account on every single line of my invoice detail table. And what happens? when I change the account at the invoice header level. Well, then I've got to remember to change all of the ones down at the detail level. Otherwise, again, my data is all messed up or has the potential to be. And if it has the potential to be, then it is going to end up sooner or later. You put something which can be broken into the hands of a large number of users and they're going to find out a way of breaking it. So. This lack of a proper querying system, this lack of proper views, really hamstrings, in my mind, uh, Dataverse. OK, let's see how we manage to jump back again. Now, on top of that, they, uh, if you like, Dataverse doubles down on its lack of um, support or lack of coherence to data modeling standards by introducing things like multi-value fields. So multi-value fields are completely anathema to uh, good data modeling and normalization. When you do normalization, you take it to certain levels. So there's something called first normal form, second normal form, third normal form, and most people stop around third normal form. That's usually good enough for a database. And in first normal form, one of the things that you do is you make sure that any single field only holds one piece of information. So a multi-value field, a field which allows you to hold multiple pieces of information, immediately violates first normal form. Now, there's a reason why things like SQL Server don't have multi-value fields. And it's not because they're old fashioned, OK? It's because <laughs> they are, are well-designed systems that conform to the ideas, the concepts of normalization and data modeling. So normalization as a concept has been around since the early 1970s. OK, it's not a case that the people who came up with Dataverse have suddenly figured out a better way of doing it. They've just done it the bad way, completely ignoring decades of well-established practice. Uh, there's other things as well um, in Dataverse that I'm critical of. So in addition to the multi-value fields, 
Uh, you've got things like many-to-many -many relationships. Now, a many-to-many -many relationship is simply uh, two sets of one-to-many relationships with a with an intersect table. So two parents, one child um, is the way that it's done. And I think under the scenes, that is what Dataverse does. But to make things easy, I guess, for novice database developers is to say, OK, we'll, we'll, we'll let you cut out that middle step. We'll just let you say, I want many here to allow to be associated with many here. And it creates stuff in the background for you, but it's hidden and then you can't get to it. OK, and so the table that it creates when it does a many to many relationship, you can't see it through the interface. You can't get to it through Power Apps. So you can't add records to it or delete records from it or query it in any way. Um, for adding and removing records, you've got to learn new bits of syntax. Relate to, I think, is the one. So, you know, it's something that makes it slightly easier up front to create that, in this example, a many to many relationship, but it's just going to store up problems for later on. OK, so multi value fields, um, many to many relationships, polymorphic relationships. That's where you can say, OK, um, this thing, let's say that it is an appointment. You know, the appointment can be for an account or it can be for a job or it can be for a contact or it can be for whatever. So you've got a relationship, but you're saying, oh, this relationship can change. It can relate to any of those things. And as soon as you do that in Dataverse, you can't even traverse that one join because it's not clear what that join is to. Now, under the scenes, uh, I suspect all it's doing is creating multiple columns, one for each possible reference. Um, but why not just do that explicitly? Why not just make that clear so that you can then do proper querying on the thing or at least that one level deep querying? So there seem to have been lots of things thrown at Dataverse, lots of features added, which I would say are extremely ill advised. OK, they're there because there's this whole push for citizen development and for, you know, letting people who don't know uh, or don't have a development background create uh, databases and apps and all the rest of it. But I really think with databases, if you don't understand data modeling and normalization, then you shouldn't be building the database. No matter how easy the tools are made for you, don't do it if you don't understand it, OK, because you're going to be messing up your company's data. And, you know, look, in this day and age, you can buy databases cheap, you can buy storage cheap. But you know what you can't buy at any price from anywhere? And that's your company's data. You mess up your company's data and you cannot replace it. OK, if you've messed it up, if it no longer makes any sense, if you've got a whole load of conflicting bits of information, then there's not very much you can do about it. OK, often you only have one chance to collect the information. If you collect it badly, if you put it in the wrong data model, then that information is useless to you. So bad data modeling is dangerous. Data modeling should be left in the hands of the professionals and encouraging people by giving them tools that do not conform to good data modeling practices is, in my mind, dangerous and irresponsible. OK, so that's enough ranting from me. I think I've made it clear now why I think Dataverse is bad. Can't put it any more simply than that. As I say, maybe I'm wrong. Stick something in the comments if you disagree. I would love to be proved wrong on this because I would love to um, be convinced that, that Dataverse is wonderful and that I can work with it and it won't cause me any problems and issues in the future. Right now, I'm looking at alternative systems because I just don't think this is the right way to go. OK, right. That is enough. <laughs> so thank you. And um, yeah. Happy power wrapping and data modeling. See you in the next video.